Hello and welcome to Crazy Math Productions. Today we start our unit on quadratic equations, and we're going to start off by a very simple method of solving quadratic equations by finding square roots. First of all, let's talk about square roots of numbers. A squared is B, A is the square root of B. Uh, you can think of it this way, we're looking at a square. All right, if it's uh, 3 on a side, then the area is going to be 9, so 3 squared is 9. The square root is just simply one of those sides. So several things. This is the radical. What's underneath is the radicand. Now, if you don't have anything in front, it's just what's called the principal square root. You can think of it as just a positive version. Sometimes you can put a negative in front. That indicates the negative of the, uh, the square root. Um, you can have both a principal and negative square root with the plus or minus sign. And you cannot have um, a negative in the radicand. Uh, looking at that example again, okay, 3 times 3 would be 9. So you could have negative 3 times negative 3, that would also be 9, but you can't have a negative inside the radicand. What can I multiply by itself to get negative 9? Well, you'd have to have, okay, 3 times 3 would be positive 9, negative 3 times negative 3 would be positive 9 again. There's no way you're going to get a negative. So having a negative inside the radicam there, um, that's going to be undefined. Now, later on we'll find out that there is a branch of math uh, called imaginary numbers, where this will actually be 3i, but we're not there yet. So in this unit we're dealing strictly in the real number system, so we're not going to mess with that at all. Square root of 0 is 0. So find an indicated square root. 6, 7 times 7, 40, uh, 49. 8 times 8, 64. So they want this the uh, principal square root. This is 8. Square root of 225. 15 times 15 is 225. So this is negative 15. 5 times 5 is 25, so this is positive or negative 5. Okay, there's no way that I can have, uh, let's see, 3 times 3 is 9, negative 3 times negative 3 is still 9. There's nothing that I can put here. If we're going to say no real solution, there is a solution would be 3i, but uh, that's an imaginary number. There's no solution in the real number system, so we'll say there's no real solution. Now, some students like to try to say that negative times negative is a positive. That's not the case here. 9 times 9 is positive 81. Negative 9 times negative 9 is positive 81. But there's no way that I can get something to something and gives me a negative unless I use different numbers. And you cannot do that. So again, no real solution. And very easy here, 0 times 0 is 0. And this is very important in what we're going to be doing in the chapter. You have to be able to simplify these square roots. In fact, in the next lesson, we'll go a lot more in depth on how exactly we're going to do that. Now, if I'm indicated square root, we can actually take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator independently. So this would be 3 fourths. In this one, 
basically what you're going to do, you're going to look, okay, we have, that's a decimal point, we have two places in the decimal place, uh, two digits. And so what we're going to do is to say, you know what, <clears throat> do a little investigation here. If I have, say, three, and there's three tenths, there's one digit in the decimal, if I multiply that by itself, I'm going to end up with 9, but there's one, two places, so there's going to be two digits in the decimal place. Why? Well, I started with 1, multiplied by itself, got 2. If I had something um, 11 hundredths, there's two digits in the decimal place. If I square it, And to get one, two, three, four digits in the decimal place. So if I go backwards here, if there's two places in the square, then there's going to be one digit in the decimal place in the square root. If there's four digits in the decimal place in the square, there will be two digits in the square root. So the number of digits that are in uh, the decimal place in the square root is going to be half that of the square. Let's look at that here. We have two digits in the square, so there should be one digit in the square root. And now I'm just going to think of this number as 121. Well, the square root of 121 is 11. There were two digits in the decimal place in the square, so there should be one in the square root. And of course, they want the principal and the negative. Number nine, again, the negatives on the outside, that's okay, that's not a problem. So we have the opposite of square root of 36 over the square root of 49. Square root of 36 is 6, square root of 49 is 7, and it's negative. Okay, again, we have decimal place here. There's four digits. There are four digits in the square, so there will be two digits in the square root. So 144, square root of 144 is 12. Now there are four digits in the square, so there will be one, two digits in the square root, and they want the principal, they just want the positive version. If you look here, there's one digit in the square, so it'd be one half digits in the square root. That's absolutely impossible. So what we'll need to do, need to pull up a calculator real quick, it is possible to do it without a calculator, but um, don't advise it. If you've got a calculator like this on a, a standard uh, PC, what you can do is uh, most of them will look like this. Uh, you have a square root key right here. So 4 and 9 tenths. Square root. Uh, we can random there's hundredths, so 2 and 21 hundredths. All right, and there are three digits in the square, so there will be one and a half digits in the square root. That makes no sense either. So again, go to the calculator. We'll say 35 hundredths. All right, now the real number system, uh, we can classify this into several different ways. The complex number system, as we talked about earlier, you're going to have a negative inside the radicand for an imaginary number. And uh, we're not going to deal with these at all, so we'll pretty much ignore this as we go. Now, irrational numbers, those are numbers, uh, for example, pi, square roots that don't work out nicely, if you will. Um, any digit that has uh, it's non-terminating, in other words, it goes on forever, and it's also non-repeating. Rational numbers can be made into a fraction, so three fourths, uh, just number say two. Um, anything uh, that's actually going to be a repetition here, so point one two with a bar notation, that would be a rational number. Um, 
22 sevenths, people usually think of that as pi. It is not pi. That's actually a rational approximation. Uh, it's very close, but uh, it's not pi exactly. Integers, uh, you've got to think, say, 0, 1, 2, 3, and, of course, forms of those numbers, like, say, 6 halves is the same thing as 3. And they're opposites, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on. Whole numbers are just 0, the one that looks like a whole, and on. So whole numbers start with the whole. Natural or counting numbers, you can't go out in nature and say, wow, there's 0 bushes. That makes no sense. So you start with just, okay, I see one bush, I see two ants, three trees, whatever. You can also say in this system here, um, all natural numbers are also counting numbers, excuse me, all natural numbers are also whole numbers, but not all whole numbers are natural. Zero is a whole number, but it's not a natural. Um, all natural numbers are integers. You can see the entire natural uh, numbers inside the integers, but not all integers are natural numbers. Negative two, for example, is not a natural number. Um, all natural counting numbers are rational, but not all rationals are counting. And so you get the idea here. Okay, radical expression. It contains a radical or a square root. So we're going to evaluate some radical expressions. Evaluate this. When a is 7, b is 8, and c is 1. When b is 8. Always a good habit to put these in parentheses. Sometimes when you're dealing with powers and negative numbers, uh, it makes a significant difference whether you have it in parentheses or not. So we'll go ahead when we substitute the value for um, the variable, and we'll go ahead and put those in parentheses. All right, so square root of, so this is 64 minus 64 times 7 would be 28 times 1 is still 28. And so this is the square root of, it's going to be 36. And the principal square root of 36 is 6. Okay, evaluate this. Um, 1 plus or minus 2 square roots of 6 divided by 4. Round your answer to the nearest hundredth if necessary. Well, both of these are really leading up to, <clears throat> this is going to lead up to what's called the discriminant, which we'll get to later in this unit. Uh, this is really sort of a, a version of quadratic equation, which we'll also get to in this unit. We're going to round our answer to the nearest hundredth here if necessary. Well, if you're using uh, your calculator, you've got to be careful. You don't want to round over and over and over and over again. So what we're going to do, we're going to say this is two different answers here. We have 1 plus 2 times the square root of 6 all divided by 4. We also have 1 minus 2 square roots of 6 divided by 4. So it's best if you have a calculator uh, that can do this all at the same time. Um, let me show you how we might could do this on um, a non scientific calculator. So 6 square root, we're going to say times 2. We'll get this extremely long number. Now we can add that to 1. And then divide all of that by 4. All right, and it says round your answer to the nearest hundred. And you notice I'm trying not to round until the very final step. The reason being, as you go through, um, for example, if I say that in a particular classroom, I say there's actually 27 students. Well, if I say, well, that's about 30 students. And if I say that in that school, well, there's about, say, um, 12 classes in a grade level, and I say there's about, say, four grade levels in a school, and there's about, each time I round, I'm getting further and further from the actual number. So what you want to do is you want, in a case like this, we want to wait until the very end to actually round. 
uh, the, the, the more and more you round, the further you get from the actual number. So we want to be as precise as we possibly can. So this can be 1 and 47 hundredths. I'm going to say about approximately 1 and 47 hundredths. Or, let me show you how to work this particular one. Again, start with a square root of 6. Now we're going to multiply it by 2. Now, I can't say minus 1 because that would be 2 times square root of 6 minus 1. Really, it's 1 minus 2 square root of 6. So I can take the opposite of that and then add it to 1. It's almost like I'm doing I keep change, change. So I'm adding that to 1 and then dividing by 4. So we have approximately negative 97 hundredths. So approximately 1 and 47 hundredths or approximately negative 97 hundredths. Probably don't need both approximation symbols, but that works. Okay, quadratic equation. Now, quadratic equation, you can write it in standard form. Uh, the quadratic is referring to the uh, squared term. Uh, basically, you're going to have the quadratic term, the linear term, and the constant. And so we go through, it is in quadratic if you're curious, uh, usually quadratic equation, quad, you think of 4, but this is 2. Well, how in the world did that come about? Well, what happens is you have two real and two imaginary solutions that usually come out of this, and that's where the, the 4 comes. All right. Basically, what we're going to do, we're going to try to get x squared on one side, get the square root of both sides, check our answers in the original, make sure that it worked. So, 15 here. x squared is already isolated. We're going to take the square root of both sides. We get x. And we've got to be very careful here. In the context of a quadratic, yes, the square root of 16 is 4. But you've got to think, too. I put in 4. 4 times 4 is 16. Positive works. So you could also say that negative 4 times negative 4 is also 16. So you're going to get two uh, two versions here, two different uh, solutions. And let's make sure that this works. 4 squared equals 16? Yes. 16 equals 16. What about negative 4? Plugging in negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is also 16, so this does work. Let's try number 16 here. First I need to isolate. I need to get x squared, the quadratic term, by itself on its own side. We're going to add 49 to both sides. So x squared, that's 0, equals 49. And now I want to take the square root of both sides. x equals positive or negative 7. Because again, 7 times 7, 49. Negative 7 times negative 7, also 49. And let's see if that works. 7 squared minus 49 equals 0. Not sure about that. 9 minus 49 equals 0. 0 equals 0. Yes, that does work. Now let's try our other solution. Negative 7 squared minus 49 equals 0. Negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. 49 minus 49 is indeed 0. So both solutions work. Again, isolate the x squared. We're going to add 5 to both sides. x squared equals 25. We're going to take the square root of both sides. And we end up with x equals. Now, 5 times 5 would be 25. So the principle would work. And the negative, um, negative 5 times negative 5 would also be positive 25. So 5 
squared minus 5 equals 20. Not sure. 25 minus 5 equals 20. 20 equals 20. That works. Let's try the negative version. Negative 5 times negative 5 is also 25. Minus 5 is 20, and it still works. Okay, this time we have multiplication in front, and we're going to solve it just like we used to solve the old-fashioned linear equations. We're going to divide through. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Don't necessarily need to say 1x squared. It's just x squared. 75 divided by 3 will be 25. We'll take the square to both sides. X equals positive or negative 5. And let's check it. 3 times 5 squared equals 75. 5 times 5 is 25. 3 times 25 is 75. And that works. That's good. Plug in negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 5 is still 25. 3 times 25 is 75. So this works. All right, looking at 19 now. We need to first get rid of addition or subtraction, then divide. Um, and if you followed crazy math productions, you know that we use the first distribute, then combine all of your like terms, play as your memory key, change, change, or you'll get burned, then get all your variables onto the same side. First addition or subtraction, which is what we're going to do, then multiply, divide. So the same thing applies with these quadratics. We're going to subtract 27 from both sides. Negative 3x squared equals negative 27. We're going to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. And then we get x squared equals positive 9. We're going to take the square root of both sides. And x equals positive or negative 3. And we do want to check this. Negative 3 onto positive 3 squared plus 27 equals 0. It's negative 3 times 9 plus 27 equals 0. Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27. Negative 27 plus 27 is 0. And that works. We plug in a negative. Negative 3 times negative 3 is also positive 9, and the rest is the same. All right, let's look at 20. I'm going to subtract 6. Remember, first addition or subtraction, then multiply and divide. So we subtract. Get x squared equals 0. Take the square root of both sides. And we get x equals. Now we're used to saying positive or negative. But in this case, positive 0, negative 0, there is no such thing. It's just 0. It's neither positive nor negative. So it's just x equals 0. So you notice there is a possibility of having just one solution. Here we had 2, here we had 2, 2, 2. Two, and now one solution. So there's more uh, more than meets the eye here as far as uh, you know, our solving our linear equations. Uh, we would usually just have the one solution. With these quadratics, we could have two, we could have one, and uh, we're still investigating, so the jury is still out. For 21, let's go ahead and solve. Subtract 81 from both sides. X squared equals negative 81. Take the square root of both sides. And here's the problem. We have a square root of a negative. Now 9 times 9 would be 81. Negative 9 times negative 9 would be 81. But there's no way we can possibly get, uh, unless we talk with in terms of an imaginary numbers, which we're not dealing with yet, uh, that this will work. So we're going to have to say no real solution here. So from our discussion earlier, we could have two solutions, as we had in the first five examples. We could have one solution, like a number 20, or we could have no real solution, like we have in 21. Let's see what happens in number 22. 
we're going to subtract 120 from both sides. We're going to divide by negative 6. x squared equals 6 goes into 15 two times. Remainder 3, 6 goes into 30 five times. And negative divided by negative is a positive. We're going to take the square root of both sides. And x equals positive or negative 5. And just to sum up, once you get to the place where x, is, x squared excuse me, is isolated, when you have x squared equals something, if that something is greater than 0, you'll end up with two solutions. If it is zero, you'll have one solution. And if it's less than zero, there will be no real solution. And that does it for Crazy Math Productions today. Thank you so much for watching.